Welcome to Count Stecula on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. Happy New Year and welcome to 2023. Glad we all made it. Today, I'd like to talk about my 2023 stacking strategy. Let's go. So for my 2023 stacking strategy, I have a story that we're all very familiar with. And I think it's quite appropriate being that 2023 is the lunar year of the rabbit. So what story am I talking about? This is one of Aesop's fables. Well, we can all remember the story of the tortoise and the hare. The story concerns a hare who ridicules a slow moving tortoise. Tired of the hare's arrogant behavior, the tortoise challenges him to a race. The hare soon leaves the tortoise behind and, confident of winning, takes a nap midway through the race. When the hare awakes, however, he finds that his competitor, crawling slowly but steadily, has arrived before him. That is the gist of Aesop's fable, the tortoise and the hare. And how does it relate to my 2023 stacking strategy? Well, I'm gonna stack like a tortoise, not like a hare. So today we have some coins appropriate for the story of the tortoise and the hare. We are looking at the Fiji Taku also known as the Hawksbill Turtle. And this is actually a unique bullion silver offering. And it actually has a, a, a pretty long history. Uh, this is the first in the series and it came out in 2010. And it has a uh, $2 denomination, the effigy of Queen Elizabeth, and this, you can tell, it's an older effigy. But it's also a country of issue of Fiji. <clears throat> Whereas the newer Hawksbill has changed to a Nui coin release. So uh, this is kind of a somewhat numismatic coin, technically. I'll put the mintage down below. It's an interesting series, but what I find a little bit unusual is that they never change the design. But it is a pretty design and one worthy of stacking, especially at the prices that they usually release with, being somewhat of a bullion coin. Um, this particular release in 2010 came in a plastic enclosure, a flip, and unfortunately that flip contained PVC. So if you look closely at this coin, you may be able to see some PVC damage on the coin. And that's kind of the haziness that you see in the fields. I find that pretty interesting, but Although it may or may not lower the value of this uh, bullion coin, um, I think it's irrelevant, but it is an interesting historical uh, fact that as early as in 2010, they were still using PVC for coins occasionally for this release. All right, moving on. So for the competitor, the rabbit, the hare, we have the Rwanda 2023 one ounce Lunar. And this is a really cool series that we'll feature in another upcoming video, but it was the only 2023 rabbit coin that I had available. <laughs> they usually release in late 2022. So it's, it's definitely a cool one to feature probably one of my first 
2023 issue date coins. And I really like the stained glass design that they use for all these lunars. Um, and they seem to be quite popular uh, given the price point. It is pretty affordable. Most of the time you can get them for under $30. Um, let's take a look at this beautiful sea turtle with a denomination of one royale. I like the design being that it's very simple. We have a nice frosted field and mirrored devices. And then we also have just a kind of a mirrored rim edge to the coin, a reeded edge and a, yeah, that's, that's not, not too pretty. Pub joy mint. You got to do something about your effigies. <laughs> that portrait is just, yeah, it's not so great. Um, but this is the British Indian Ocean Territory, uh, which is the country of issue for 2020. And a uh, really cool turtle coin that came out, low mintage, I picked up back in 2020 and uh, do not regret it. So there just aren't that many turtle coins out there. This is a really nice one, excluding the uh, portrait of the queen. So that is the coins we have featured for you today, but to talk a little bit more about the stacking strategy and how it relates to that story, yeah, I am going to stack slowly and steadily, and that's what I've been doing for the most part in the last year. I recently hit a large milestone in my stacking journey of 1,000 ounces, and when you reach 1,000 ounces, of silver, it's okay to slow down. <laughs> it's definitely okay to just stack slowly and steadily. Uh, I think I probably overextended myself in the past when I first started out, and that's pretty much a very common theme. Most people have an issue with uh, going in, diving in head first, and probably a little too strongly, but I definitely feel a certain level of maturity in my stacking journey. Reaching that 1,000 ounce mark, I feel that, you know, there's no rush anymore. There's, there's certainly no pressure to get a whole bunch more silver. Um, in fact, <laughs> I wouldn't mind unloading some uh, so, and that's what I do. I, I buy and sell. You'll find plenty of YouTubers that claim that they never ever sell their silver, which I think is nonsense because we live in the real world and, um, this is money. If you believe that it's money, then hey, you're going to spend it eventually. So let's be practical. And, uh, you know, when you have a thousand ounces, I think it's perfectly acceptable to dig, you know, into your stack a little bit to, um, you know, offload pieces that you don't want and uh, replace them with pieces that you do, kind of curating your stack. That's typically what I like to do. And so I regularly have around 20 to 30 ounces of silver for sale at any given time because I'm constantly stacking more. So uh, buying and selling, I think, is, is a natural part of growing within the uh, journey. And, and you should become comfortable with that because the more you know about selling, the more lessons you will learn. Many stackers will tell you that they learned the most when they sold. And I think that's a valid point. And I took that to heart early on in my stacking journey and I sold an ounce of silver within the first uh, few months of stacking just to test the waters, just to see. And of course I lost some money, but I only lost $3 off that one ounce. So I learned my lesson and I realized where I want to uh, 
focus my energy within my stack and how I can uh, do this in a way where I will lose less or maybe even gain more. And although coins like this with a different design on them may uh, drive a lot of people crazy in terms of having to create their spreadsheets or um, keep track of purchase histories and sale price and all that, um, everything being different. I find that uh, I'm, I'm totally okay with it. And I like the variety more than I do with uh, the same silver. So although it is possibly an inconvenience for some for some people if they would rather just get uh the same silver coin over and over again like the american silver eagle or just silver buffalo rounds so that they know that when they sell them it's exactly tied to spot and they can play that um spot price to make money great i prefer making a trade on the collector's premium. So, you know, if something goes up because it's a rare piece, maybe I'll take profits in it and uh, collect some of that collector's premium rather than um, trying to sell uh, something based on the price of spot because it's really hard to time the market uh, in terms of spot price. It can be quite difficult, especially when you're constantly dollar cost averaging um so but that is the that is the plan for 2023 to dollar cost average little by little and not overextend myself definitely not go into debt to buy silver that's really important you definitely want to have emergency cash uh for any emergency that might come up so you can't spend it all on silver uh, or you could get yourself into a heap of trouble. And that's why I typically try to maintain a level head within stacking, not uh, get manic um, when it comes to purchasing coins, and enjoy the hobby. There's lots of cool releases all year long, and to be honest, I can't get them all and I don't really want them all because 95% of them are going to be fail failures anyway uh, in terms of collectors and flipping there's a good potential for that um, so you want to be somewhat selective you want to get coins that look good they have that high appeal and uh, hopefully they will not get milk spotted and maintain their value but again I don't really worry too much about milk spots um they don't bother me as much as some other people but you know it's just a part of stacking silver i do intend to stack some more gold and i'll probably stay within the fractional realm because uh one ounce of gold is just an insane amount of money to spend on one item at this point in time i was stacking gold when it was lower you know in the under $1,500 range is where I felt it was a good sweet spot and I had um, more money to be able to afford a one ounce coin. So I've kind of slowed down on stacking one ounce gold coins because of the price point. And I prefer just the 10th ounce to quarter ounce piece every now and then. I tried to get a one tenth ounce every month at some point, but oftentimes I can't even swing that but yeah I'd like to get my gold ounces up a little bit higher for 2023 as well maybe crack that 20 ounce mark uh, since I am fairly close so that is my stacking strategy for 2023 what is your stacking strategy for 2023 do you have one are you thinking about it uh, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments and please go ahead and hit that like, smash the subscribe, uh, take a look down in the description if you're interested in any of my 3D printed boxes, and leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching Count Stacula on YouTube. I am signing out.